Hello, my name is Pamela Strum, and I'm sharing with you something I've been working on for a while. I've been practicing with a friend mental telepathy. So I think this is going to turn into maybe a series as this friend and I might come together. She's an energy worker as well, and she has a gift of telepathy, which we all do. And I really wish to present um, what, you know, what we've been playing with and how it's been working out and sharing it with you. But this, this uh, recording has to do with organic telepathy versus AI tele mental telepathy. So artificial intelligence, mental telepathy. And I'm gonna put a little bit of a disclaimer on it because this, when I get to the artificial part, it has to do with, once again, one of those bizarre Pamela events in life where someone says something to me or I witness something that, you know, goes off inside of me somewhere where I absolutely know it's something for me to bring forward and to share once I process it and the timing seems correct. So I, you know, as I said, telepathy is a gift. Uh, that we all have. And I'm even going to say, I think it was probably a preferred mode of communication, maybe in different iterations in this earthly realm, where we have heard about, uh, you know, ancient civilizations who were here before us, and they had these abilities. And, and certainly television shows make use of this now. Um, but we have all had experience or know someone who's had an experience where maybe you're so close to someone you read, you can read their thoughts or children before their fontanelle is closed at the age of seven, you know, around the age of seven, they um, are often telepathic. And I know my daughter was, and sometimes it, I have to admit, it could be really um, jarring <laughs> to, to have someone like precisely read your thoughts, um, but, but really um, a, in a more expanded consciousness, it's beautiful and it's a normal way to communicate. And in your dreams, don't you tell, you know, you communicate te telepathically, right? It doesn't matter what language people speak, you understand the language just organically from what the person is thinking and you can read the person's thoughts, it's automatic. And I believe our words and adding words to what we're thinking is um, actually a manifestation power tool where I'm going to quote the Bible in the beginning, there was the word or some such thing. I might not get that precisely, but the words are incredibly important because we have thoughts and then we add a certain resonance uh, and frequency with our sound and our thoughts and our sound um, create and it creates our entire uh, world and our experiences in our life. Uh, but I don't believe that we need them. I think it's a lost art. And as we're at this now time on the planet where we're in this, uh, the, the earth is holding a higher and higher frequency. So we are holding more and more light and the uh, dark structures are being revealed and the, the, the um, density and darkness is being eliminated as the light shines on. We're awakening within us our own um, DNA activity innovations and our, uh, the structure, the authenticity of those missing strands of DNA are being activated. And maybe some of you who are listening to this feel like you're, you have more of your clair senses activated, your clair audience, your uh, clairvoyance, cognizance, sentience, your ability to pick up, uh, uh, pick up information that uh, is not presented to you in a third dimensional capacity. And I will say this is correct. We are able to perceive things that are uh, in a higher, higher energetic, maybe frequency and resonance, and we're able to pick this up. And so playing with communicating with someone this way, it's not a passing thing. Do you ever have the phone ring and you know who it is? And it's, it doesn't make sense. It's not like you were expecting a call from someone at that time. You simply know. And certainly um, parents with their children experience this kind of bond or best friends. And you, you absolutely can read the person's thoughts. You know exactly what they're thinking. But you might toss that off as well. Of course, I know this person. So I know how they think. And, and you might dismiss it. But I encourage you to play with it. So here's the 
Pamela story. Here's where this comes in. So I'm, I'm going back. Poof. Uh, let me see. How far back did this take place? Maybe five years ago, four years ago. I met someone in a Barnes and Noble. I was with my children. He was with his child. And lo and behold, recognized the person when I uh, belonged to a gym and they were working out at my gym. And I like talking to people. And, and <laughs> this person, we, we had a more and more in-depth conversations because I found what he had to say fascinating. And I, this person had a knowledge of history that dumbfounded me. Like it, it's certainly not the way I was taught in school. Um, I wasn't a history major. So maybe for those of you who are history majors, you would have you know, felt, of course. But this person had a knowledge of history and politics that I was absolutely drawn to. And they knew dates, they knew names, they had this person, and I'm intentionally leaving them unnamed. I actually can't remember their last name at this moment, uh, but for their own uh, protection and privacy sake, because I did not ask permission but to name the person, but they had worked under a few administrations, presidential administrations, such as the, the Bushes and the Clintons, and this person knew a lot. So in course of conversation, in course of talking about life, um, uh, I shared with this person for commentary, the video I did about my modality, grid light healing, golden ratio, interdimensional light healing. And I was interviewed by uh, Alicia Hartzell in this video. I'll, I'll pin this video to, to this, so if you'd like to watch it, to find out what this man would think about the video because our conversations took a turn of talking about energy and uh and and a grid light healing uses our energy grid but a lot of sacred geometry and the golden ratio and um, from its name uh, so this person shared with me research he himself was doing and Okay, this is the part, I'm gonna slow down because this is the part that gets me really excited that was the inspiration for this video and quite honestly, a little freaked out at the same time. He was working on a technology amongst the other things that I was so curious about of his uh, experiences and working for um, you know certain um, presidents, et cetera, where if light could be beamed in just so, and it sounds like they were working on the precision of the light, into our brains through the um, optic nerve and the third eye. And I think from the optic nerve, it goes to the optic um, chasm. Is that how you pronounce the optic chasm? It goes the optic nerve, the optic chasm, that crossover point. So like the right eye um, goes to the left side of the brain, left eye, right side of the brain, so that crossover point, right behind that is the pituitary gland. And if they could hit the light just so in a flash, they, undefined they, they with this technology, they that um, control the world, like who are the they? The they would be able to read the person's thoughts. Hmm. I can tell you when he said that, I, I had rapid fire thoughts. My brain was shooting all over the place with that one. And so for those of you who do energy work and meditation, oftentimes the focus is the pineal gland. So the pituitary gland's a little lower. Maybe if I were to go right back here and smidge lower inside my brain is, is, the, is the pituitary gland. And then more toward the back, um, a little higher is the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is our inner eye. It's that part of us that uh, we have our thoughts and we can see our inner world. And from our inner world, we can project outside of ourselves and, and call in frequencies and create our outer, what we consider our outside of ourselves world. 
and vice versa, take in what we see, what we perceive and bring it to our inner world for processing. So our pineal glands are incredibly powerful. And I will say one of the reasons, I'm getting back to this story, but one of the reasons uh, some of us feel like we don't have these abilities of clairvoyance, clear audience, clairsentience, claircognizance, it's because we've been shut down. So the pineal gland is super vulnerable to chemicals. And certainly in this, in our culture with exposure to chemicals from the food we eat, the you know air we breathe, the water we drink, our products, our cleaning products, our beauty products, we are bombarded with chemicals, um, things that we put in our bodies, um, like uh, just recently, those are loaded with chemicals and it shuts down our pineal gland. Our pineal gland can calcify and we lose our capacity of that third eye inner, inner um, sight. <sighs> so maybe I'll go back to talking about at some point what to do about that, to decalcify the pineal gland and certainly detoxify your body and activate further your abilities to, um, to see, to hear, to perceive things that aren't in a, maybe a third dimensional form. Back to the story. So the man says this to me and uh, right away, I was, I felt yuck. This is awful. And wow, this is really amazing. So this is where I want to go with this. Let's talk about um, developing an organic uh, telepathy or I'll start on the subject before I lead you into Pamela putting the pieces together and proposing something to you about artificial intelligence, mental telepathy. And I'm gonna tell you, if this happened years ago, and so the technology is probably there already. And I'm going to maybe toss in my thoughts on how this is playing out, how this can happen. But please, by all means, feel free to ponder this for yourself. The reason I haven't come out with this sooner is I have no desire to stoke the fear machine. There's plenty of that. I wish this message to be filled with hope and real excitement. Keep in mind, all technology can be used in a positive polarization and a negative polarization, just like I'm using social media to communicate with you. And I consider that a positive, um, but certainly people put things out on social media that are very horrific and fear laden and um, convince you that you're not amazingly powerful the way you are. And that what I would consider a negative polarization. So in organic telepathy, when I put out a potential video with this friend of mine, uh, we'll get more into the details of bringing that forward in a practice. But I want to propose to all of you something right away as far as using that capacity to see and flash a light and use that to your own advantage as far as what you're thinking and your capacity to use telepathy as far as reading other people's thoughts. I will encourage you at first to focus on yourself and your own abilities to perceive frequencies that um, are not in um, form yet and haven't been spoken to you. So, so really the goal here is that we really don't need our phones and, and we don't need ways to communicate like our computers right now, like I'm doing with you or even televisions or technology because the fact of the matter is, I don't know if you all know that the, the United States, which is, is states is my country and other countries have this as well. We're at this point uh, connected to three power grids that run the entire country. That's it. So it's very easy to shut down the power grids and have enormous outages. And that could happen. It's technology. But then how would we communicate with each other? What would we do? Well, let's build our organic superpower telepathy that we were all born to uh, utilize. It's certainly within our design structure to do this. If we can think about this and imagine it, it already exists. And I can tell you it has existed. Children are born showing us that it exists because they have telepathic powers. 
So what do you do? Let me do a simple exercise with all of you to show you how this might work this technology that this man said. And when I was shocked by his revelation, he um, he told me, Pamela, all the information on how to do this is there. He was referencing using the Sorbonne. It's a university in Paris. And he said, in the basement of the Sorbonne, all this information is right there. So he didn't when he saw I was shocked, he didn't think what he was telling me was amazing. And so I'm sure the information is there. I'm going to now take another little detour as I tend to just a moment. Doesn't that get you, you know, make you wonder like, who has access to that? Because if I were to go online or do I need to take a plane to Paris, would I be able to easily access this information that he's referencing? Would I Pamela Strum be able to access all of this information or do I need someone who has inside information? Have you ever wondered, I know I'm not the only one, really like what is in the archives of um, the Smithsonian Institute, for example? What secrets do they have? And say, well, we, we wanna put out, you know, we put out our, um, you know, we choose what goes out into our museums based upon public interest. And I'm sure that's a part of it. You know, but what's the other part? Do you ever wonder what's in the Vatican? Like, wouldn't you want like have access to the library at the Vatican? Maybe the Vatican in doing some penance for what they've been doing lately and hiding lately can give us more access to what they have in their library and archives. So this information apparent that I'm that's my detour back on story. So this information exists and technology was now I'm sure it's there being built to um, access this and, and artificial eyes. So artificial eyes were mentioned in this technology. Yes, um, I'm trying to stay on topic because right away I, I wish to share so, so, so much. Okay, so when I close my eyes, I'm telling you my pineal gland and other gland structures are designed to perceive the light that I have projected outside of me. So when I close my eyes, whatever source of light I last perceived, because this man said with the flash of light, they can read your latest thoughts if they hit the light correctly. So if I close my eyes, I can see if, and, and I focus my attention toward my third eyes. If my eyeballs are looking toward my third eye, I can see light because my glands are perceive light, particles of light. It's part of our bliss and our awakening and our enlightenment is to perceive light sees light in the shape of which I was last looking at the light. So right now, if I close my eyes, you can close your eyes and look inward. I will see the shape of light in a computer screen because that's the most dominant light beaming into my glandular structure right now. And whether it's coming through my third eye sight or my um, optic nerve passing through uh, in front of my pituitary gland going, then splitting toward my pineal gland. Um, I see it in the shape of what I look. Now, I also have a bigger light to light me here. So when I close my eyes, if I look up a little bit and stare at the light, I close my eyes and I see that shape of light, the circle, um, the hollow circle of light. So how can you work with this? You know, do you know the stereotype of people meditating and looking at a candle? So this is my yin yang candle you might have seen in my uh, video of the equation of creation. And I love this because all, whether it's positively or negatively polarized or light and dark, it's all part of the same creation structure in unity. Um, so if I stare at a candle, and then close my eyes, it's an organic way for me to light that area of the optic nerve crossover and get a spark of light. 
and then perceive my thoughts and my creations, which then I project out in a certain resonance or frequency, especially if I add sound to it. So sometimes you see images of people, they meditate with their eyes slightly open, like a little slit, that might help you. So if you wanna practice, staring at a candle um, is, a, is a traditional practice and it's organic. And the reason I mentioned organic as opposed to using an artificial light is because it will awaken within you the structure of your design. So you can utilize the technology of looking at the light, activating within you that structure um, of sight, inner sight, right in front of the pituitary gland, back to the pineal gland, which is seeing your inner universe and the perception of you, how you see yourself. And you can train yourself using organic light, like a candle. And then when you, um, you know, close your eyes or you focus on your third eye, that imagery, imagery provides that spark that awakens within your own consciousness, um, your own authentic capacity to utilize telepathy. It starts activating that system within you. Um, and then if you decide to practice with someone, you can... Um, you know, practice by first staring in the candle, go in to meditate, maybe mentally send someone a message, maybe connect with their energy. And I'll get into more of that practice later. Here's my concern about this um, artif um, a artificial intelligence technology. So I'm just throwing this out there to you. I am not saying, this is my disclaimer, I'm not saying this is the way it is. I'm not saying that this technology will be used for nefarious purposes, but possibly in certain hands, it might be. So I'll also tag this video. Actually, let me write down the videos I wish to tag. So my interview about grid light healing, I'm writing it down so I remember, so I can share it with you. Um, okay. And uh, my video of a prequel to Clearing the Illusion. where oftentimes we see technology and it's it exists by the time I find out about it, because I'm not in these um, positions, um, you know, life puts me in these fluky circumstances, it's it's already in the works. And, and this is my guess. So, of course, I'm sure this technology can be used for beautiful healing, where an artificial source of light like a light bulb, for example, I don't know, is projected out. But here's another thought for you. Um, what about our technology? So I know over the last years with the school shutdown, uh, shutdowns that have happened with COVID, my school districts spent an enormous amount of money, not toward a furtherance of our children's educations and programs and much needed upgrades for the buildings. Um, every single solitary student has a device provided by the state and, and the district, the school district. And it is for, of course, you're not going to negate the reasons that we're told. The reasons that we're told, of course, is so that it's fair that every student is using the same device. So when children are schooling at home, they have access to learning. This is, yes. And um, the children in our school district still have their devices. So devices are prevalent. and. Most of you have probably heard that even with your TVs, frequencies and resonances can be emitted from these incredibly high technology devices and they can influence you. They can influence your thought patterns because they put certain frequency and resonance into your environment and it affects how you think, it affects your health. What if the flash of light as I'm talking to you is the little beam from my camera on my device? What if that emits a frequency? So um, a, a little light flash 
And from that light flash, I'm just playing here. I'm not saying this is how it works. This is just me having fun with someone who isn't giving me all the details, like this man who told me the story and basically telling me to look it up. It's all there, um, which I wasn't able to get that information. So if any of you have access to the Sorbonne in Paris, let me know. So what if our devices emit a very pointed laser specific frequency. And you know how we all are holding our devices up or hanging our heads, looking at our devices, right at, what are you looking at? Your, your eyes, your third eye, it's going the, the very pointed light. And what if a flash was admitted, emitted? Because who wants to listen to us anyway? Like we all know those devices like um, an Alexa, for example, is listening to us. Our computers are listening to us, right? This isn't something new. And I'm not saying this once again to get everyone frazzled. I'm saying it to just wake up a little bit. And really, you don't need the devices for this and protect yourself. So maybe get in the habit of covering up that little dot um, or, or um, so... <laughs> So that they, those people who are watching us um, or spying on us or whatever is going on that we sign away when we agree to the terms of something are doing this like a little flash of light. So my thoughts could be read. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. I mean, what am I really doing or thinking about that anyone really wants to read my thoughts? I don't know. I mean, um, our information has been gathered so Things could be sold to us, our information's gathered so that um, personality profiles are designed to track and anticipate how we think and behave to a further purpose of, I, I would, you know, I don't even want to say you use your imagination, like, please don't use your imagination for that, because that's feeding the control structure. Um, I already put out some videos on the matrix and exiting the matrix. So maybe that's something else I'll tag. Exiting the matrix, the artificial matrix of the control of the negatively polarized service to self um, um, people who <laughs> control the planet. You know, I don't know. The structure is coming down. Just relax, everybody. So the matrix series, matrix. Okay. This is really hopeful, what I'm saying ultimately. So another thing that occurred to me is um, face recognition technology and um, eye recognition for our computer devices. The man told me he was working on artificial eyes. Well, that sounds good. I'm sure if you're a person who has uh, vision issues, who would not agree to an artificial eye technology? Wouldn't you say yes? But what if it's used for other purposes, nefarious purposes and controlling things? I'm just saying, it's just a question. So I always say no to anything that involves scanning my eyes and um, scanning my face to recognize my face. I know I was going to try to get easy access through airports and they wanted to be able to do recognition. And I, I said, no, thank you. I'll wait in the line. I'll wait in the line for hours um, rather than give my consent to technology being used for that. Maybe we're moving in that direction, but until the people who are running things are of a um, unity consciousness, higher frequency, higher dimensional expression, um, who are using, using that technology, my answer right now is I do not consent. So maybe I've given my consent away unknowingly by like not reading the nitty gritty of page after page after page of terms of service. Now, this all sounds so off track. I'm saying to you, be cautious with AI mental telepathy. I strongly suspect that the technology is there to read our thoughts. And I'm just throwing out there a possibility. Um, take it or leave it. This is just me questioning the narrative on what we're told. And um, from this person that is involved in major level politics, has the most astounding capacity to recall history and the, that I never was taught in school when he was telling me and keen, keen, keen intelligence. 
who um, is you know researching the technology this is what it's again going back four or five years that have to do with reading our thoughts and artificial eyes and when i looked him up i'm like who is this guy it turns out he had uh, uh was it owned a media company in the philadelphia area i didn't go looking into the extent of his media company i didn't look into who might be above him if, it, if he was flying solo or he was part of a big information network that usually funnels to, um, you know, a point of some point of just a few people who give our uh, news out to us in mainstream. So once again, um, as part of my introduction to telepathy, please have fun and trust yourself that you have the capacity and you can wake it up within you to operate telepathically. If you practice now, um, um, it's amazing and you will strengthen that skill. And I'll be putting out more videos on being able to do this. Um, and it might come in handy someday, you know, to, um, you know, not always rely on, on um, artificial technology. You can do this organically. I promise you, you can do this organically and have fun playing. Um, once again, it's, it's in our children to be able to do this. So that means it's in, it's in you to be able to do this as well. So I hope you had fun with this video. I hope you feel hope from this video and um, have a great day, everyone. Thank you for paying attention. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to share this video with anyone to get this information out there. It helps me. Um, it helps people find me. And I'm really grateful for all of you. Thank you.